So. So let's talk supplements. Oh, interestingly enough, for females, this doesn't work for males. Creatine is actually it has actually good antidepressant properties. Really. And creatine, for those of you who don't know, is not a friggin' steroid. Okay. Something that occurs naturally in meat. Yeah, it's a natural thing that occurs in meat. You can't get enough of it in. If you train with weights, okay, you need more creatine than a person who don't person who don't train with weights. So you get creatine. It's called creatine monohydrate or whatever. You can get it at Costco. You don't have to buy. It's good, cheap. Yeah, it's cheapest can be. You don't have to buy the most expensive one because if you go to a health store, um, they will tell you that oh, this one's better than this one. That's bullshit. They're all the same thing. It's creatine. You have to get it in. Um, you can't get enough meat in to get this amount of creatine that you need um, when you when you weight train. Okay, so creatine is one of the supplements, and I know, yes, I promise we'll make the supplement video. One of the things that we put in our post um, workout smoothies. We'll talk about the supplementation and stuff like that after. Are we done with the evils of estrogen? Sure. <laughs> okay, let's quickly. I don't know if we are we going to make a separate video on progesterone or just keep going. Well, I, there's not too much to say about it except that it's, I mean, all steroid hormones in the body are made from cholesterol. Now, the interesting subject. So, and the very first thing that happens to cholesterol in this whole sequence of events that uh, where your body makes everything from progesterone to testosterone to cortisol to aldosterone, the whole works. Um, its first, st first step is cleaving off the side chain on cholesterol to make pregnenolone, which is really the mother of all steroids in the human body. Mm -hmm. And the next step would be through the progesterone type things and from there it's either towards the uh, cortisol, glucocorticoids, whatever, the cortisol type things and mm -hmm. or the androgens and through that to the estrogens and whatnot. But they all start with cholesterol. Okay. Which is supposedly this evil yeah. thing. So okay. progesterone is just one of them way up there. Okay. However, okay, do not ignore progesterone. Okay, because here's the thing, the main, main thing, and all of the girls in my age group and up is going to relate with this thing. If you do not have enough progesterone in your body, okay, there's nothing major that's going to happen. Okay, it's not going to make your mood, this and this and this. However, you cannot sleep. Okay, so the one thing that progesterone really does is help you sleep better. Because um, when I went to the doctor and tested my hormones and everything, obviously in the beginning they start you on a low dose of something and they up it and they up it and they up it until you get to a point where you are emotionally stable. Okay, so um, with the doctor, with me, uh, I can tell you my little spiels that I went through, but with the progesterone that I did not have enough, I could not freaking sleep. I was tired and exhausted. I got up tired and exhausted. I just could not fall asleep. Or if I did fall asleep, I was awake every hour. So I never got a really deep sleep until my progesterone levels were um, high enough. Okay, so he started me on a lower level. Um, with the testosterone thing, we had a kind of <laughs> That was a little interesting thing. Uh, we, we also, and here's another thing. A doctor cannot put you on a freaking hormone and let you just let you go, okay, now you're fine, okay? Your hormones for the first year, basically, of getting it settled needs to be tested every three months because that's how long it takes for your body to adjust to the hormones that you're actually getting. So when I got my little first dose of testosterone, <laughs> okay, it was just a little bit high, just a little bit high. And I was chasing you on around the house. <laughs> he enjoyed that very much, but it was not normal for me to be like that. It's not normal, girls, for a lady to think about sex from the moment she opens her eyes until she goes to bed and then she dreams about it, okay? If that happens to you, your testosterone levels might be a little bit too high, okay? When you get it down, though, <laughs> to a normal level, you will just be a normal person that will think about sex. Oh, we didn't, um, you know, we, we, we didn't discuss the testosterone levels in men. How do they know if they have low testosterone levels, except feeling bad and blah, blah, blah. For males, okay, um, 
when you when you're now a little bit, I'm not talking about the 20 year olds and whatnot. I'm talking about, and I was popping over into testosterone again. We never did it in the other video, but that's okay. This is just going to be a fun family video. Uh, libido and erections. Okay, so the first thing, I mean, obviously, guys, you know, when you get older, um, in male menopausal age, andropause, andropausal age, or whatever. Uh, a normal thing for a guy is to have erections during the night, wake up with them or not wake up with them, but have them during the night, and then definitely wake up with the erection in the morning, okay? The other symptom of, uh, well, if you don't have any of that, I mean, if you go a week without even thinking about sex, you have no libido whatsoever, a naked woman can walk past you and it does absolutely nothing for you, that might be a sure sign that you have low testosterone, okay? <laughs> and then the other thing is, um, if you never get, if you never wake up with with um, erections whatsoever, that's also another sign of low testosterone. And then, and one that we just found out about recently that our doctor never told us about, uh, because uh, one of the guys on my, um, well, actually one of my subscribers, one of my clients, one of my, you know, whatever, uh, is going through the same thing right now with his testosterone. He's going through all the hell that we've been going through <clears throat> in whatever state he lives in because his doctor's a moron too. So he's fighting the fight that we fought before. But uh, the, the one other thing is uh, men losing um, legs on their lower legs. So you see, lower legs. what did I say, legs on your lower legs? You lose your legs on your lower legs. <laughs> yeah, hair on your lower legs, okay? So if you're a guy that is hairy all over and you have hair on your upper legs, but your lower legs are like skinned, you know, with the hair like just here and there and all over, apparently that's another sign which we didn't know of, which is I guess your physical sign of having low testosterone. So those are the things that you should... Also, if you're lifting weights in the gym and you just find that you're not getting anywhere or even going backwards. Yeah, so if you're not gaining any strength in the gym, if you're training yourself to death and you're not getting anywhere... Or even getting weaker. Yeah, or weaker. Yeah, because that's basically what happened with Chris. I mean, Chris is one of is, is a client of mine that actually came to me because he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which he's now cured from. But he's been um, in the gym, you know, for a long time. He's been eating right, sending me his food logs and everything, and he wasn't getting anywhere. And that's at the point where I said to him, you know, you really need to get your hormones tested. So uh, he ended up going to the doctor and getting his hormones tested, and that's exactly what was wrong with him. If you guys, if a doctor only replaces a male, just like with the females, they only want to um, replace your, your estrogen, they also just want to replace a, a, a male's testosterone. But if you don't deal with the estrogen levels of a guy that's too high, then what's going to happen? If you, you, well, if you give him more testosterone, he's going to have more estrogen and he's going to grow boobs. And get fatter. And get fatter. Uh, exactly. Yeah, the boobs are probably not a good idea. Man boobs are not particularly pretty. Or attractive. But other things happen too, and this is probably true for mm -hmm. women on uh, hormone replacement too, which is where the progesterone comes in for you. Mm -hmm. For a man, once you start replacing a testosterone, you will probably be turning off that whole cascade of uh, 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 steps that converts cholesterol to all the other hormones. And you might be low in pre pregnenolone and some of the other stuff. So it's good for a man on testosterone replacement to supplement with pregnenolone, which is cheap as dirt here and easily available in the U.S. Uh, interestingly, you can get progesterone cream here too without any prescription. At the pharmacy, I've seen it. Women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get it at health food stores. You can get GNC pharmacy everywhere. It's a little. Do you, can you remember the name of it? I don't know. It's probably just progesterone cream with different brands. Yeah, but it, it, I mean, you can go and you can ask the pharmacist for progesterone cream. So you don't actually need a prescription for that. That is one thing that's available. You know, it's not doing anything other than making you sleep better. Okay. Okay. So. Um, then what did you, you said something about the pregnenolone, or there was a um, what? What is the product that people can take to uh, that is the starter of all their hormones? Pregnenolone. Okay, and where do you get that? Uh, you can get it in capsule form at many health food stores. Okay. Uh, I'm cheap. I bought the bulk powder at <laughs> some place. I mean, there are lots of places. So okay. Fifty milligrams a day. So do you find? Okay, is it available in Canada? I think we recently talked, we rec see that's the thing Can when we said, it's not available in Canada, oh God. Okay, see, I just pissed a lady off with my first video because she thinks that I said but something bad about Canada. 
we know of somebody in Canada who just recently ordered it and then got it. Yes. She had no problem getting it from the States um, because she came to us and she, she was the one that came to us and said, listen, I've been <coughs> dieting exactly the way you told me to. I've been training my ass off and I am not losing one ounce and I've been doing this for six weeks and there's no results. So it's very obvious that her hormones are screwed up and I know full well she's just, not going to get any help. Yeah, she's just... Menopause. Yeah, she just turned menopausal. Okay, so hormones are all screwed up. So Johan uh, was talking to her on the fitness page, and he was the one, that, and he said to her, "Get pregnenolone because that is the, the this and is the DHEA. supplement D H E A. Yeah, which is what? Tell them. Dehydroepiandosterone, which is the precursor to the uh, male hormones in the body. Okay. Uh, it's actually a pretty good supplement for women who train. Mm -hmm. For men, it does nothing <laughs> in terms of being uh, uh, adding muscle, or whatever. But for women, it's okay. Useful. So for those girls uh, who's who's watching this video who do not have access to get the real stuff that's going to make you feel wonderful and everything, uh, these are the two supplements that you're going to be taking. And you might not get them in the country where you live in like in Canada, but you can order it online. So we'll do another idiot box right hither with the two products, the DHEA and the Pregnanolone, and you can order it online and you can take it and um, dosage. I mean, if they don't say dosage, how are we going to help them out? How much should they take? Around 50 milligrams a day of each would be a good starting point. Okay, did you guys get that? 50 milligrams of each a day. That should get you guys at least at a better place than where you are. It might not... Do for you what proper bioidentical uh, hormone replacement would do, but at least it would put you a step ahead of every freaking other person that gets prescribed um, antidepressants and freaking birth control pills. Okay, girls, do not let a doctor. Let me tell you something. Having nothing and going through hell is much better than taking the crap that the doctor is going to give you. Okay, but I want everybody to. You know, for those guys of you who do not have access to this, if you if you ever go on a holiday, you're planning a holiday, okay? Plan a freaking holiday and go to San Diego and go and see my doctor, okay? Because you only have to see him once a year. This will pay for it. But if it's at all possible for you guys, instead of going to Hawaii or the Bahamas or whatever the hell, go to San Diego and go and see this guy, okay? Or see somebody <laughs> that can actually help you. For those of you, however, who cannot afford to take a trip to San Diego, this is the closest you're going to get to feeling better and more normal than you are without any treatment or without getting the crappy treatment. So those two products are very important for you guys. Write them down. Go do some research on it. Um, don't believe, like I always tell you, don't believe everything we tell you. Go research it. Every single thing that comes out of our mouth, you have to research, okay? So I'm challenging you to that. So that will be the, I don't think we have to worry about the progesterone. So we can maybe do some depression stuff next. Yes, because the other side of the coin is once your hormones are right, you might still feel like crap because your life is a mess. 